one bit of intimacy. It is the number one veil of relationship. Self is the number one veil of our relationship with God and with our neighbor. Love God. First and greatest command. Love your neighbor. Second. There is no self in that. Let me say it again for each and every one of you. Words like this. Honor Jesus. Because he teaches three things the most. Love, sacrifice, and humility. When his words, not man's words, are released on earth, that honors him the most. Because men love darkness more than the light, it can either feel like conviction or judgment. Judgment for those who are in pride. Humility for those who are in righteousness. When you hear people say, oh, you can't judge me, it's because they're taking truth as condemnation, not truth to set them free from self. Yes, the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces the soul and the spirit, but it also reveals the heart. The heart to your condition and the grace to change your position and condition, least you become undone. So tonight, or this morning by grace, I would love to share with each and every one of you, wherever you are tonight, Jesus said we should come into his chambers. Come into my chambers of unconditional love, healing, and cleansing. He said, tonight, teach on forgiveness. Because many have secret offenses in their heart, hindering them from hearing me, seeing me, or experiencing me. Tonight, you're going to hear roots in your garden. Your heart is the garden. That's why we always reverence the Father. You know why? Because Jesus said, whatever my Father has not planted must be uprooted. Do you see the work of Jesus? His work is different from the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit convicts you. But Jesus doesn't convict. He uproots. He tears down. He pulls down. He destroys whatever his father has not planted. And it starts with lies. The number one thing Jesus is uprooting from you and I, what's hindering your reconciliation to the father, is pride and self. Those are the two trees. In, God, in each and every one of us, our garden. And pride will not make you see it. Because truth confronts trees like an axe. You say, can you lay the axe to what? The root of the tree. Jesus goes to the root. Holy Spirit deals with the fruit. Father deals with the garden. Jesus deals with the root. Holy Spirit deals with the fruit. See, when you walk with each one of them, they will tell you deep fruit, deeper root, deepest garden. Please, you want to hear these three letters on forgiveness today because without the truth in mercy, You will think you are in right standing with Jesus. But you're not. When you come to the secret place, secrets of your heart, that's not of him, or seeds, 
sown by the enemy, when it comes to the light, it exposes what is that of him. And you have two choices. Either to reject Jesus or humbly say, I acknowledge this. Please help me. Humility is the beginning of change. Meekness is the end of change. Why are you not changing? That's the question. Some of us are ready to hear truth that will set us free, not truth that condemns. Because you can have holiness, you can have righteousness, you can have truth, but without love, it is nothing. Jesus said to me while I was in his chambers to share with you, love will dress you. Truth will keep you, but glory will change you. So why are we not changing in certain areas? Tonight we're going to go deep. You ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength. See these five areas? Jesus looks at the percentage of each, especially heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. So every issue in your life right now, please look, listen, and learn, is in your heart. It's not your neighbor. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. See, any issue you have in life starts from your heart, not the other person. So even if the other person is acting out of character, it's you. This is how Jesus is. He will make you look at yourself first before you judge. Then you will realize, I have to show mercy because I'm twice as ugly as the person I'm judging. Many want love, but they neglect the twin of love, which is truth. Not man's truth. Not your truth. The closer you walk with Jesus, he begins to show you the way of the heart, the truth of the heart, the life of the heart. Some of us are ready for the first three veils. It says the heart is desperate. Desperate, wicked, deceitful. Who can know it? Um... I'm here to let each and every one of you know we don't know our hearts. And if you think you do, that's the beginning of blindness. Until we acknowledge and accept our condition in humility, Jesus cannot change us because love is not forced or imposed. Tonight, I'm going to read three letters on forgiveness. There is more, but Three to begin, because all day long, Jesus has been speaking from the garden about roots, fruits, leaves. Some of us are ready. You say, man, I'm praying about this area, I'm fasting, but it's still not changing. I'm going to tell you why. Because we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. I should tell you something. Fasting cannot change you. Prayer cannot change you. See how we've been taught wrong? Oh, if you pray, you'll be changed. Nope. Glory changes you. You say it again. He said, my love will dress you. My truth will keep you, but my glory will change you. And then he began to break down why his people are not changing. He said, roots, fruits, leaves. He said, we are called trees of righteousness. Mm-hmm. So are you the right tree bearing the right fruit? Because a corrupt tree 
cannot bear good fruit. What type of tree are you? And are you allowing Jesus to tend to you like a tree? Please, wherever you are, don't be distracted tonight. Focus 100%. Because when Jesus says, watch this, our heart. He's looking at the heart. He's about the Father's business, about your heart. Friends of my face, friends of my heart, friends of my hands, brides of my face, brides of my heart, wife of my heart. I'm the one of you of his heart, and I'm here to let you know. The word, those two words, are roots and fruits in your garden. And there's one that keeps Jesus out of the garden permanently. He can't come no more. You say, huh? You must look. Why would he oppose one? So, tonight we're talking from the garden. Whenever we talk from the garden, we're talking about the heart. Whenever we talk from the mountain, we're talking about glory. Whenever we talk from the bedroom chambers, we're talking about secrets. And whenever we talk from the courts, we're talking about issues of the heart. You see how every place by the Father, he says, is the heart. Because the heart reveals the body and the soul. You need revelation. What is revelation? Watch this. Jesus loves to play hide and seek. What is hiding you that you don't see? Hmm. You see? What is hiding? Is what I'm saying with you. These are Jesus' words. What is hiding in your garden that you don't see? There was a secret enemy hiding in the garden of Adam and Eve. A thought was their friend. Hmm. Hmm. Just note. The snake was their friend. How did it become their enemy? The enemy of their heart. So please, let's lay foundation today. Jesus said in this season, come into his chambers. I'm going to show you how. Come into my chambers of unconditional love, cleansing, and healing. Three, he said, many of, he said, many of my people are carrying offenses. In the secret places of their heart. And have not come to me to address it. Take note. And what did he say? He said, remember the servant said, oh, can we cut down? He said, no, let them grow together. In the end, I will separate. How many of us want the closest, deepest, highest, greatest, and biggest intimacy with the Father and Jesus in this last days and end times. Well, it's going to require, watch this, if you want the closest, it's going to require the closest work. If you want the deepest, it's going to require a deepest work. If you want the highest, and you, watch this, you must desire these because of the coming deception and darkness that's increasingly growing every day. You can't say, oh, well, I'm just going to settle for the great. You're not going to make it. Jesus said to me, there is a place in him and the Father that you are untouchable. Now, don't you want to seek that kind of relationship with him? Yes, but my friend, let me tell you one thing about the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Please don't miss this. They will show you the end from the beginning. But they will show you the in-between process. 
called trust. Everything they do is out of relationship. To trust someone, they will not give you all details about the plan. They will only give you, they will only show you the end. Don't miss this. This is for everyone. But the in between, look at Joseph. He saw two dreams about his future. God didn't show him the pit, the prison, and Potiphar. He didn't show him. Oh, trust. So tonight I'm going to read three letters on forgiveness. Are you carrying secret wounds? Watch this. There's two types of wounds. There's wounds from Jesus and there's wounds from Satan. The, and let me, different, let me help you see the difference between the wounds of Jesus and the wounds of Satan. Jesus' wounds, it opens your heart to love him more. It's called circumcision. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. You know your friendship with Jesus increases more the more wounds you take from him, by him, through others. But there's another one where Satan uses the weaknesses of others to wound you. You will feel the opposite fruits. So how do you know the wounds from Jesus? And how do you know the wounds of Satan? The fruits. Tonight, we're going to talk about roots, leaves, and fruits. Some of us are ready. This will help you. This will help bring about change in areas you are struggling or wrestling or battling. Instead, in time, share with them the seven-year process. The 40 types of pride. The 40 types of humility. The 40 types of self and the 40 types of meekness, how it takes seven years, my friend. Can I share something with you? With all boldness, you can't change Jesus' plan. You can't try to debate or um, reason with him out of certain things. Let me tell you why. He said to me, 80% of our fault he covers. Watch this. 80% of our fault he covers because many don't have the boldness to confront their faults. That's why it says love covers the multitude of faults. Just because love covers, truth must expose it in secret, not in the open. Oh, you want to hear this. This will keep your heart pure and clean because you, you will not know the secret offenses that are having dominion in your heart. Come into my, come into my chambers of unconditional love and healing. Let's start with the first letter. May we all look, listen, learn when it comes to forgiveness. Number one, recognition and confession, take note of that, is the beginning of healing. As that words of Jesus from the garden. Recognition and confession is the beginning of healing. Everybody take notes. First, I want to read the letters. Damn. So many are praying for healing. No, you can't pray for healing. You have to look at the root. The root of the issue is in the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hmm. Don't you love this kind of discernment? Let's break this down. Don't miss it. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. So every issue you have in your life is not demons. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, tonight, truth will sanctify you. The, the, Jesus said, pray, sanctify us with truth. Thy word is truth. Purify us with love. Sanctify. Let's say it again. See, this is truth. Truth is to see the root and the fruit on the tree. Hmm. Jesus said, whatever my father has not planted. Okay. So whatever the father has not planted must be uprooted out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. One. How can you, being evil, say anything good? This is what Jesus said to the Pharisees. You brood of fighters. Hmm. So if you can't say anything good about someone, what is in your heart? My friends, can I tell you why, what the Father said? He said, truth like this is what made all who started with Jesus his son, leave him. He said they went after him for miracles, healing, deliverance, but they did not love him and the truth that came from me. Don't love my son because of healing and deliverance and blessing. Love my son because you love him and you love the truth. So what should be the purpose of following Jesus? Love and truth, not power. Not glory. But many, let me say one thing Jesus said again. He said, Don't be deceived by those who mention my name in their teachings. I will show you the condition of their hearts. Just because, just because one mentions my name in, in teaching does not mean it's from me. Ask me to show you the condition of their hearts. For many, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. So just because someone mentions Jesus' name, that don't mean he knows them. So tonight, I'm going to give you the three letters. One, as he said, root. Remember, look at, just look at a tree. If that tree is not bearing fruit, you have to cut it down. And re sow the right seeds for it to grow, to blossom into the fruit the Father is our. Because the Father is a farmer. Jesus is a gardener. The Father sows, Jesus reaps. So tonight, I'm going to read the three letters for you. As you said, first, lay the foundation. The foundation of humility and meekness. Is the key to walking with me on earth after this in heaven. But I'm looking at their second walk. Love your neighbor. That many want love, but when it comes to truth, take note. It requires balance. The same two trees in the beginning, my friend, is standing before you and I in this end times and this last day. I'll say it again. What happened in the beginning, what happened in the end, God shows you the end, not the beginning. And he doesn't show you the, the in between the beginning and the end because three things must be established in your walk with him before he brings you to the end. Love, obedience, trust. And trust is earned in times of no details. It goes along with obedience because you love him. Jesus said, in order for him to bring you and I into the promised land where his father is, so that means the father is in the promised land. That's where he's taking you and I to the promised land. It's the father first. Not reward, not blessing, Can we break this down? Because we've been taught wrong in the church. Oh, follow Jesus for blessing. Wrong, follow Jesus for reward. Wrong, follow him because he's taking you to meet his father. 
we purify the feet. You are following Jesus because he's taking you to meet the Father. You're not following Jesus because you are scared to go to hell. Here, that's wrong. You're not walking with Jesus because of what you can get from him. Wrong. That's selfish motive. If you love someone, it should be without expectation. Until we deny ourselves one. That's just the first 50% of self. The second one is die to self. So can we break it down? Deny yourself, cross. But die to self, crucifixion. And now you are ready. That's when he began. You know there are many people on earth Jesus has not begun with. He said, huh? What do you mean? I'm going to show you the. I'm going to show with you the father's appointed times and seasons, like the seven year process, the fourteen year process, the twenty year process, and whoever comes out before the twenty year process will not make it to their destiny and purpose, and he will take them home early. Mm-hmm. Many are not made it to their destiny and their purpose. They might finish their assignment and ministry. But when we talk about destiny and purpose, my friends, patience is the key. Because you are lacking, you and I are lacking a lot of humility and meekness the Father requires. Because humility plus meekness equal trust. So trust has twins. The Father will show you the end. But he won't show you the beginning. The beginning is the beginning of your walk with Jesus. That don't mean you've made it to the end. If it took Jesus from the age of 12 to 30, come on somebody, and he was perfect, he was pure, he had no sin, 18 years before he started his ministry and assignment, 18 years. Can we all learn the Father's way? That it's all about perfection and timing when it comes to the Father. He's all about perfection and excellence. And the longer the process, the greater the impact you will make on earth. And the greater the destiny, the greater the suffering. Because you're not, when people hear of suffering, they don't see the benefits of how it's going to save others from death and hell. Father said to me, to tell you, if you're going to resemble me in nature, likeness, heart, and faith, you will walk the same path my firstborn son Jesus walked. Watch this. And the end, forgiveness, and unconditional love is required at the cross to meet me. So just because you have a visitation from the Father, don't miss what I'm about to tell you. The Father can reveal to you that you're still a baby. The Father reveals things to babies, not to the wise and prudent. Sonship, you have to have dominion and mastery in love. Love means willing to lay down your life for your friends and your enemies. Because the Father love, he makes it rain on both the just and unjust. That means people who do the injustice, you must die for them. One day, I want to share this with you. Jesus was carrying his cross in the visitation. People were throwing stones at him, laughing at him, mocking him. And I was standing there like the Ethiopian man, looking. My friends, this visitation was so real. You know, Holy Spirit will take you back in time and space to Jesus' life and make you relive it so you can live it in your time. That's the whole purpose of visitation and encounter. Seeing Jesus and the Father, you know the whole purpose of it? 
is to relive his life in your generation. So he takes you back in time to see those things Jesus walked in and how he lived. So when you come back in your time, you walk in the same sandals and shoes he walked to please the Father. So Holy Spirit will take you back to experience sufferings with Jesus and the Father. Such as this visitation I want to share with you and what the Father said when heaven opened. Man, Jesus did not look. Look, my friends, the movies, I honor them. But the movies don't depict what really happened. He did not look like a human being. He looked like cut up ribs. That's how much he was beaten. He looked disfigured. He did not look human. He looked like a sheep slaughtered. The only thing I could see the most, I didn't even see his beard. It was plucked by the Roman soldiers. The only thing I could see was his smile and his teeth. Because none of his bones were broken. I could see his eyes, but I could not see his eyebrow. His whole face was full of blood. I don't know, there was this force from behind me that pushed me like wind to go and help him carry the cross. Because he couldn't, he fell down on the floor. He couldn't carry it no more. And do you know who you were thinking about? You and I. I saw selflessness and sacrifice face to face. Look, can I say one thing about Jesus? There is no self in him. He is the walking, he is the walking embodiment of love. He, he don't do love. That's who he is. Love is his person, not an action. It's beyond action. It's beyond intention. It's a person. Selfless. And I don't know. This force, which was the wind, which I knew was Holy Spirit, opened Jesus' mind for me to see what he was thinking while he was getting beat. These people were merciless. While he was on the floor, they were still stomping on him, picking on him, laughing at him. Holy Spirit said, look behind them. I saw Satan. He was the one who moved a whole nation to one man who was innocent. How many of you know the Ethiopian man was African? Where were Jesus' friends? Where were they? It took a stranger to help him finish his course. Take note of what I just said. It took a stranger one who was not in the fold to help Jesus get to his final destination. I saw Mary. Oh, she's beautiful. Jesus' mother. I saw John. I saw Salome. I saw Mary Magdalene. Four. Other women were at a distance, crying, weeping, wailing for him, while the Roman soldiers and the men were laughing at Jesus. The whole time his eyes was on me. I didn't understand that until seven days later. To let you know, it takes a few days for you to fully understand a visitation. Because it becomes a tattoo on your heart. It becomes a, it becomes a blueprint in your heart to remember and be a witness to his suffering. We are getting to the point when the heavens open. And the Father's face appeared openly. That's why there was an earthquake. But do you know what was really behind the earthquake? Was the Father's face. In the Bible, it talks about when Jesus said it is finished, the earth shook. But when you are taken back in time and space, you really see what happened before the earthquake. The Father's face appeared. That's why Jesus said, Father, forgive them. It wasn't just a prayer. It was a face-to-face communion while he was dying. Take notes. My friends, I could not stop crying for three days. The passion of Christ. His 
goes with what I'm about to share with you. Forgiveness. And unconditional love. The wind pushed me to pick up Jesus. He was on the floor. Pick him up. And encourage him. How am I encouraging him? That's what friends do. They suffer with one another. When you are carrying your cross, he comes to help you. When you don't want to pick it up no more. When he's picking up his cross, where are you? This is where 90% of the body of Christ is missing. When Jesus is suffering, where are they? You don't want to hear what he said. You really want to hear what he said? It will make you give up everything all over again just to make it right with him. Because they are missing 90% of their destiny because they don't know he is suffering for them to make it. Please don't think only 2,000 years ago that Jesus died. He said, I'm the same today, uh-huh. yesterday, and forever. Forever he's suffering. Forever he's the same. That is the same suffering. 2,000 years ago was for the Old Testament. Same suffering is happening today. Heaven opened. And I saw the father's face. You know the father's face is like a newborn baby? Pure. The father's face is like a newborn baby when you see his face. His face is youthful, yet ancient. Long beard. It comes to his chest. Beautiful big eyes. He was crying. It was the father's tear when he hit the ground that the earth shook. That earthquake that happened after Jesse finished, that was the father's tear. He was weeping for his son because he rejected the answer. They, the whole world in Jesus' time rejected the solution and the answer. They killed the solution. The answer. Can you imagine the answer comes after years of you crying for help and you kill it? If it was not Jesus' prayer, oh Father, forgive them, it would have been judgment. To help you understand mercy triumphs over judgment, look, listen, and learn to what the Father said. I thought. It was just a visitation with the Father and Jesus concerning his last days on earth and how much suffering he bore and endured and persevered for billions of souls. But it was a lesson to me and a lesson for all who are willing to look, listen, and learn. If you say you love Jesus, the intimacy and suffering is part of walking with him. You can't choose one and neglect the other, especially the suffering part. Because suffering produces fruits. But watch this also. It also uproots roots. Father said, Forgive them of their wrongs. And forget their evils for my sake. Do it for me. My son. Do it for me. Everybody, are you listening? Forgiveness is not for you. It's for the Father. Forgetting the evil people do to you is not for you. It's for the Father. And if you love him, you will do it for him. And I'm going to explain to you why in that visitation he said, do it for me, my son. 
What I see my father do is what I do. Everybody tell me, you shouldn't be doing things on your own. No? If you're going to be a representative, represent or be an ambassador of the kingdom, mm-hmm. a friend to the king, what the, what the king says is what you say. What the king do is what you do. That makes you a friend of the king. But watch this. To be heir to the throne as a son who is next in line because the father prepared thrones of intimacy. Please, thrones is not just power. Thrones is not just glory. Thrones is intimacy. You know why? Because you get to sit with the father in the father. There's a difference between standing before him and sitting in him. Standing for suffering. Sitting is resting. You know, when you sit, you are resting. Jesus says, you are those who have continued with me in my suffering and I appoint unto you a kingdom and what? You shall sit with me. On throne, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's not just kingship of sitting. He's sitting on thrones. Thrones is not just you as a king. Thrones is also friendship. Thrones is also intimacy. Thrones represent love. It's not just power. So who is on the throne and seat of your heart? This is the war. Satan wants your heart to sit on the throne. Do you know in your heart right now there is a seat and there is a throne? Who is on the seat and who is on the throne of your heart? That reveals the fruit you're going to bear. A tear dropped from the Father when he spoke. And I had to pick up the tear and drink it. It was sweet in my mouth, but bitter in my stomach. That's when I began to understand how bitterness takes people to hell. But forgiveness is sweet. You ready to hear some, some truths today? Bitterness and sweet. That's why he said, forgive them of their wrongs and forget their evil. It's twofold. You can't just forgive without forgetting. The healing is not done. That means if you can't forget, it's evil. Oh, you say, huh? Yes, my friends, this is how the Father judges. If you don't forget the evil, you say, how? When you read Luke 6, it says, he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So I just gave you the answer. Kindness makes you forget the ungratefulness and evil done to you. Kindness makes you forget. Patience makes you forgive. Love is patient and kind. It is not rude or arrogant. Do you see how our patience uproots rudeness? Some of us are dealing with being rude. You don't have patience. Look at how Paul reveals roots and issues. He said, love is patient and kind. It is not rude or Arrogant. What should, I, what should I tell you? That means without patience, you'll be rude. Without kindness, you'll be arrogant. Do you see the answers? When you are kind, you won't be arrogant. When you are kind to the ungrateful and the evil, watch this. You are forgetting the evil. So it's twofold. Forgive them of their wrongs. That's wounds. Forget their evil. That's scars. If you don't forget the evil done to you by people, by, watch this, showing kindness to them, it becomes a scar. Not scars of love. Scars of hate. Please listen to what the words, the words of the Father said. 
He said, forgiveness is not for you, it's for me. And he said, when you forgive them of their wrongs and forget their evil, you overcome death and hell in them. Death and hell does not have legal right to take them. And then he gave me an example as I was standing there. Look what my son did and look what Stephen did. Stephen prayed for Paul who killed him. Stephen said, Father, do not hold your sin against them. Jesus stood up in heaven. Ooh, don't miss this. Do you want Jesus to stand up for you? But he don't stand up for everyone. It's things like this that pleases him and makes him stand up for you. If you want Jesus to stand up in heaven, the Bible says when they were throwing stones at Stephen, the heavens opened and he saw Jesus standing. But wait a minute. Jesus said, you will see me seated. Come on. At the right hand of the Father. So before Stephen, he was sitting. My God. But when Stephen forgave, he stood. Jesus will not stand up for you. You don't pray for your enemies. You don't show mercy. You have to do what you see him do. Stephen is the first martyrdom of mercy. He said, do not hold their sin against them. Are you praying for those who stone you? Read 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. It's not resentful or irritable. Take note. Are you irritated by others? Are you resentful towards others? You are lacking two important fruits. That's robbing the other fruits. Because the enemy wants your garden barren. Remember, he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. And how does he do it? He's looking at, do you have patience and do you have kindness? Okay. So I'm going to send somebody who is impatient to make you like them. This is how the enemy works. The two guards of your heart is patience and kindness, my friend. Without patience, not only towards Jesus, but your neighbor. I tell you the truth. You will not be able to forgive without patience. And you will not be able to forget without kindness. Let the words of your heart receive these eternal words because your eternal life depends on forgiveness and unforgiveness. And Jesus said to me, the two veils and scales is pride and self. I oppose the proud but I give grace to the humble. Uh Uh-oh. You ready? Which areas of your life is Jesus opposing? Hmm. Because he only gives grace to the humble. He doesn't give grace to the proud. He opposes the proud. That means there are areas in our life Jesus is is opposing you, not the devil. What did he say to the first church? My friends, this what I'm about to tell you was my first inspection I had with Jesus seven years ago. I have a few things against you. Oh, tonight we're going to learn different sides of Jesus because you don't just want to hear the love inside, the doves. I know he has other sides of him. We must all learn to grow. Jesus told his own bride, the seven churches, I have a few things against you. Let me tell you how Jesus inspects. He comes and first tells you all the good. But I have a few things against you. You have left your first love. This is how he inspects you. He will tell you all your progress. I know your works. 
and your patience and how you don't tolerate the Pharisees. He will say all, he will tell you the good. But towards the end of your inspection, <laughs> the rebukes and chastisements and corrections begin. And it can be very painful because it is a sword in your heart. He will pierce you with truth and heal you with love after. He's a surgeon. Everybody look at the seven churches. Look how he inspected them. You, there's one you don't want to hear the most. I heard it for the first time. Right after marriage with Jesus. The seven churches inspections. I went through them. And that's how Holy Way became Philadelphia. The only church that will be raptured is the Philadelphia church of the seven. The other six are all lukewarm. They'll stay behind. What if Jesus tell you, I have a few things against you? How would you respond? I have, I have never heard that before until Holy Spirit said, go to the first church. Look, you will have similar visitations Similar encounters, similar appearances like the Bible. The more you study and meditate, you, you, you start living what is written. When you marry him, you're going to go to the seven churches inspection every seven years. Until your book is complete in heaven. And I say it again, the marriage is deep. It's not just intimacy, romance, love. No. Don't forget, he's preparing you to be spotless and clean and present you before his father. And suffering is the fastest way to get all pride and self out of us. He said, some things I can't teach you. Some things you have to experience. That's why tests, trials, temptations, and tribulations are necessary for your change. I will test you in the area where there's pride. When it manifests, you will run to me for humility. And before I read the three letters, I want to lay down this foundation. Jesus will have things against you. Can you imagine that? People say, oh, if God be for me, who can be against me? That's 50% truth. Jesus will come to you. Read the book of Revelation. The first church, he said, I have a few things against you. You have left your first love. Everybody, you see it? When you leave your first love, Jesus has a few things against you. These are for brides. Teaching like this, brides can receive. Believers and other believers, they'll be offended because Jesus is a rock of offense. But brides understand the bridegroom must keep them dressed and keep them pure and clean. So they need daily inspections. That's the only way a husband can dress and keep and cover and secure and protect his bride by inspecting her. So you cannot be exempted from inspection. But he is your husband. I've seen Jesus inspect the angels. Like, you know, the president, he goes and inspects the army. I've seen Jesus do it. And the angels that were not ready, he will send them back for training until they are ready before he send them out for one battle. He's a commander in chief. He inspects you before he release you. And if you're not ready, you don't have on the right garment, you say, I have a few things against you. You left your first love. If you don't return to your first love, I'll take your lamb stand. Everybody, you see how Jesus inspects your life? He can take things from you if you leave your first love. I will take your lamb stand. This is how many ministries are going to be taken. They are busy in ministry 
when they have left their first love and you don't know the light is off. So when you feel like something is off in your life, check your love walk. You've left your first love. I'm giving you a sign to stay awake that when you sense something is off or wrong, return to your first love. Meaning, when you first loved him, when you first met him, return to that place. It's hard to return there when you're in religion. Because religion keeps you busy in the things of God, making your heart cold, hard, and dark. You wouldn't know you've left your first love because now your attention is on things of God, not the heart of God. See the difference between things of God and the heart. That's why you must be a David and be at his heart, not things. Those things will be added when you chase his heart. But when you chase those things and not his heart, watch this, your light can become darkness. You say, how? Your love can turn to hate because of people. Please don't miss this. When Father says, forgive them of their wrongs, patience, forget their evil kindness. Have you forgiven them of their wrongs? Have you forgotten their evil? If you don't do it, you become what people have done to you. You are undone. This is what Jesus told Isaiah. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. The prophet didn't know his mouth was dirty until he met Jesus one-on-one. Everybody read Isaiah 6. To let you know when you experience the glory of God, when you see him face to face, you will see areas in your body that are not clean. Isaiah said, my mouth not clean. Okay. We need visitations in the glory to see what areas of our life are not clean. Isaiah could not be sent unless his mouth was washed in the coals of fire by the cherubim. So you can't speak for Jesus if your mouth is clean, unclean. Isaiah is a prophet. He's going to go and speak to the nations on behalf of the king. But the king, Jesus, Isaiah 6, Isaiah saw the Lord. What was his first encounter when he saw the Lord? In glory. I'm not talking about love. In glory. I got to change your mouth. What was the first thing Moses did when he saw Jehovah? I got a speech problem. Glory reveals your weakness and where you're not clean. And it needs to be cleansed before he can send you. Which area of your heart are not clean? You need an encounter. Can everybody please meditate on Isaiah 6 after tonight? When you have a visitation, a, I'm talking about a real visitation with Jesus, because you can have false ones. A real visitation with Jesus will change you. It will convict you first to repentance. Then the coals of fire come to cleanse those areas revealed in the encounter. Can I say it again? Isaiah a prophet saw God on his throne and saw the cherubims crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Watch this. He saw the Lord. He saw the glory. He heard them singing about the glory, but his mouth was still dirty. That should tell you visitations and encounters don't mean you are clean. Uh Uh-oh. What happens after? Everybody, read Isaiah 6. He saw the Lord, but his mouth was dirty. Uh Uh-oh. He heard the cherubim cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. Yet, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips because I dwell among the people who are unclean. A prophet whose mouth was dirty. He saw their glory. And he recognized his condition. You see why you have to see the glory to see what's wrong with you? 
In his presence, he won't tell you. In his love, he won't tell you. But in his glory, he will. Because he doesn't share his glory with no man, neither can you touch it. But if you want to share in his glory, you need corrections. Such as our mouth. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Um, thank you, Corey, for saying what you said in the beginning, that in this time and season, uh, we're going to be having special visitations from Jesus. This is one of it. He will reveal to you. In, the, in dreams or visions or face-to-face, you are a man of unclean lips. Don't get offended. Because Jesus can change you without him first telling you the truth. The truth will set you free. It doesn't offend. It only offends those who love their dirt. But the truth, it says, love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It rejoices with the truth. Those who are humble receive the truth with joy. Because the joy of the Lord is their strength. Forgive them of their wrongs. Forget their evil. My son, many of my children have wounds they carry around in their hearts. Many were inflicted by other people. Be insensitive to one another. Are we all looking, listening, and learning? Do you know how we wound each other in relationships? We're not sensitive to each other. Hmm. When you are not sensitive to the needs of others, you will wound them. You will inflict them with wounds. Hmm. Are you sensitive to the needs of others? You will wound them. If someone has done you wrong, not only done, but has said anything wrong, how do you respond? You must forgive him in order to break yourself loose from the hurt that binds you and that person. Uh oh. I think the whole world needs to hear this kind of teaching. You are bound to someone through hurt. Not attached to. Unforgiveness is so tight. When someone do you wrong and your immediate response is not forgive, you have a bondage. Hey, this is no demon soul. This is the heart matter. Out of the heart flows. It didn't say out of hell. It didn't say out of death. So please, uh, yes, Lord, I'll read that one too. I love how Holy Spirit brings us. When he said about, yes, Holy Spirit, I'll tell them many of the evils you see on earth, it's not all Satan as people think. It is weeds growing in the hearts of men, insensitive to me. I'll read that one at the end. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not all evil on earth is from Satan. Some is the evil growing in people without demons. So that's the heart of men, not the heart of Satan. Everybody, do you see it? I like this one the most. If someone has done you wrong, Watch this. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's even deeper. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit say, also say, if you have done yourself wrong. Hey. Mm. Wow. Holy Spirit. If you have done yourself wrong. Well, let's start with the first one. If someone has done you wrong. Is everybody getting understanding? Wisdom is the principal thing. In all your getting, get understanding. Everything you are hearing tonight, if you're not getting understanding... As the words of eternal life is coming to you, it's refreshing you, it's cleansing you. Deliverance is taking place on the line already. Healing is already taking place on the line already right now. If your heart is really open, you'll be getting healing right now. You'll be getting deliverance right now. You'll be getting liberty right now. You'll be getting freedom. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you want to be liberated? You need the Spirit of God. But where he is, not man, not church, where the spirit of the Lord is, not your church, not your pastor, the spirit of the Lord, 
He brings liberty, not condemnation. So a lot of people are not speaking from the Holy Spirit. They're not liberating nobody. They are murdering people with the word. The Spirit of the Lord don't only bring conviction, he brings conversion, and he brings liberty. The Holy Spirit always says to me, I'm saying the same thing, he said conviction always leads to conversion, not condemnation. If you feel condemned, that's not Holy Spirit. Though. That's familiar spirit. And we know its fruits. We'll talk about that one day. Familiar spirit and its fruits. Because it's familiar with your past. Holy Spirit don't just address your past. They address your future. So you got to know familiar spirits can't reveal your future. But they can talk about your past and keep you there. Uh-oh. You must forgive him. It's about your response, not what they do. Uh-oh. Can I tell you what Jesus said to me a few years ago? He said, I'm not looking at what they are doing. I'm looking at your response. It's not about what they are saying and doing to you. It's about your response to me and them. If you love me, you will watch this. You will bless those that curse you. You will speak life to those who wrong you. You will speak life to those who curse you. And you will speak life to those. See? Speak life. Your response. Reveal you, not them. It's not about what they are doing. It's about who you are. Love is not what others do to you. It's who you are to them. So it doesn't matter what they do to you. Who are you? <laughs> Identity versus Assignment. What you do for others is ministry. But who are you? So can you see when a wrong is done to you and you don't deny yourself, what will happen? Your tongue chooses death, not life. It says life and death is where? In the power of the tongue. And you know the most dangerous ones are the words that's going on in your heart and mind and your thoughts are not talking. Those are the most deadly venoms. Do you know what deadly ven- venoms are? He said, explain it to me. Because I didn't pass that test years ago. I was meek but not quiet on the inside. On the inside, I wanted to respond. The Holy Spirit would say, be meek and quiet. So I know for sure it is Holy Spirit in times of being done wrong that when he, he possesses you, you have self-control. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You won't have self-control with your mouth. And you can destroy many things with your mouth without the Holy Spirit. Because you don't see the consequences of your words carry death. Now you are, watch this, guilty. You got blood on your hands. Can I talk about having blood on your hands? A lot of people don't know they have blood on their hands. You know what I mean to have blood on your hands? Shedding innocent blood? That means You've done something wrong to somebody who's innocent. Do you know what that means, my friends, to be guilty? Like David said, forgive me of blood guiltiness. What are the six things God hates? It goes on in his court. Hands that shed innocent blood. Or bearing false witness about your brother. Or feet that runs quick to evil. Have you shed false witness about someone? You got blood on your hands. Has your hands shed innocent blood? You got blood on your hands. How many on social media have blood on their hands by choosing death weapons? You know the you know the worst one is when the person has not done you wrong and you are slandering them. Gossiping. Jesus said to me, they are murderers. They will not inherit my kingdom. I said, Lord, what is a murderer? He said, life and death is in the power of the tongue, not the gun. When you character assassinate, slander, false find, he was breaking down in his court how he judges. He said, all sin is not the same. All iniquity is not the same. All transgression is not the same. All abomination is not the same. Watch this. 
He said, denial does not get the death penalty, but betrayal did. That's why Judas, death came and took him, but didn't take Peter. He said, all sin is not the same. You don't, the way you judge a rapist is not how you judge a serial killer. Oh, so it is in heaven. All sin is not the same. Wrong teaching from the church. Because they've not been in his court to hear his weights and balances and scales when it comes to different crimes committed by ignorance and bliss. Like, for example, the Pharisees, he said, they're not going to escape the damnation of hell. You understand that? They were gone. For so Jesus, the king, whom the Father handed all judgment to, to say, you're not going to escape the judgment of, the damnation of hell. He didn't even say that. How far did they go? It's teachings like this that will preserve your heart and your soul. Love will dress you. Truth will keep you from falling into deception and blindness. Stemming first from the most deadly key the enemy uses to open doors in your life. And what is it? Okay. It starts with this. If someone has done you wrong. So take note. Keep sending somebody to do you wrong. Be equipped. Be trained. You, Bible says, offense will surely come. Um, that's a sure word from Jesus. You can't change that. Oh, Lord, I pray against offense. Nope. You can't. It's coming. What is your weapon? Do you have on the whole armor of God? Do you have the weapon to defend? Because wisdom is a defense. Hmm. Wisdom is a defense. Do you have the wisdom to defend? You become offended if you don't have the wisdom to defend. Watch this. Isn't that deep? You must forgive him in order to break yourself loose from the hurt that binds you and that person. Wow. That means if you don't forgive others of their wrongs and forget their evils, without you knowing, you are in a bond with them. And how do you know? What's your thought process? If it always swings towards the evil they do to you, that's how you know you have a sota by default. He just said to me, Lord, I said, Lord, why do you, I said, Lord, why do you allow offenses? He said, to keep you exercised in forgiveness. Exercise. Everybody, that's why you got to go to the gym. The ex, so let's go to the gym of the Holy Spirit. You got to exercise forgiveness every day because offense will come. You can even be offended by your, at yourself. That means you have to forgive yourself. Mm. There might be something about yourself you don't like. You got to forgive yourself. You have to love yourself the way he loves you before you can give it to someone. Or how you see yourself is how you're going to give it to somebody else. Did you know that? Wow. If you see yourself as ugly, you call everybody else ugly. That's why the change you want to see must first begin in you. Don't expect other people to change. You haven't changed in the area where you're expecting them to change. Uh Uh-oh. Don't expect people to change in areas you have not confronted in your own life. Can I say it again? Don't expect other people to change in areas you haven't changed. They're sure hypocrites. Like my friend Art said, you have logs and specks. See, logs itself, specks is pride. It goes to the root. Logs, specs. Specs is small, but can cause the most damage. It says the tongue is the smallest member in the body, but can cause the most damage. Wait a minute now. If the tongue is the smallest, but can cause the most damage, why can't it be caned? Because the tongue, naturally, scientifically, is connected to the heart. 
Do you know where your voice comes from? Like the voice you're hearing right now? It's coming from the heart. But the, but the tongue is the one that brings the language of the voice in the heart. So your heart is speaking, but your tongue is, is interpreting what your heart is saying. Do you know that? The language we're all speaking, English, French, is in the heart. But it can't be understood if it's only in the heart. It has to come through the mouth, and the tongue is the one that gives the language of what the heart is saying. So I'm, right now I'm speaking English. But in my heart, I might be speaking Hebrew because the tongue is interpreting what the heart is saying. What is your heart saying that your tongue is not saying? That's deadly. Because if you don't have love in your heart, your mouth will speak hate. See, the opposite? If you don't have love here, your tongue will interpret something wrong. If you don't have humility and meekness in the heart, the tongue will cuss. You see? The tongue is has. Watch this, my friends. The heart is a world. You know that? The tongue is a world. Wait a minute now. That small little old member, yeah, he a, he's a world. Wow. If the tongue is a world, and how many worlds do you have in your body? Hmm. Read James. It says the tongue is a world of fire. Who can tame it? Guess what the number one body part of your body that needs that can be tamed. It needs a lot of grace and seasoning. The Bible says your word should be seasoned with salt. You need seasoning on your mouth. See, you can't speak the truth without salt. Ooh, oh Jesus. Come on, come on, my friend. Your word should be seasoned. See? With salt. Do you have salt in your mouth? I'm about to go natural. I started doing this. I don't know if you want to do it, but that's fine. Jesus said to me, every morning, buy, go and buy Himalayan, Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt, sorry. And put it on your tongue. You know why? Himalayan salt naturally has 102 minerals your body needs. If you don't have minerals in your body, you are deficient. You are decaying. She said, that's how many people in my body is becoming. They have no salt. And when your salt is, come on, when your salt has no taste, what happens? I thought what I was doing was natural. He said, no, it's spiritual. Where there is no salt, sea salt, right? Huh. Sea salt. What is the sea? The ocean. In order for you to experience Jesus' love in the ocean, you need salt. That's why he said, I've made a covenant with David by salt. Go and buy him Himalayan salt. Put it on your tongue and drink water. You get all the minerals you need in your body from Himalayan salt or Celtic salt. Then he said, now let's go to the spiritual. The earth without salt is sour. Have your relationships with people become sour? Because there is no salt in it? Or has your relationship with the Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit, is there no salt in it? Meaning, you're no more tasting his... Come on, somebody. If it goes sour, it's not good. So watch this. Do you know what preserves your relationship with the Father and Jesus? Salt. Read Matthew. Jesus talks about salt and fire. You don't just need oil and fire. You need salt on your tongue. Because the tongue is a world. It, it can destroy. It can build. So what is the answer for your tongue? You need salt. Grace. Grace is salt. Mercy is it's a different one. But I'm letting you know grace is salt. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. Mm-hmm. He, said, he said grace is salt. Mercy is oil. If you put olive oil on your tongue... My friends, your liver will function. Your liver. If you know your liver is connected to your tongue, okay, mm-hmm. we are the body of Christ, right? Can I please share some, some things with you why there is certain sickness in our body and how it applies spiritually? Okay. Your kidneys is connected to your ears. Your eyes is connected to your liver. 
So if you have eye problems, check your liver. If you have kidney problems, check your ear. That's why when you go to the doctor, well, the first thing they do is they put what? Light in your eye. Because the eye is the window to the... So your whole soul is connected to your eye, right? So the way you see someone, it's a, it's a reflection of your soul, not them. Uh-oh. Their eye is the window. That means your windows are dirty. You need to go and get it clean. If the windows are not clean, can you see? No. That means when someone do you wrong, or how many people say when someone do you dirty, they need to get the revelation. When someone do you dirty, it's to make you dirty. Because they are dirty. They can only do what they have been done to. If they do you dirty, understand they've been done dirty. Hurt people, hurt people, right? Wisdom would say they've been done dirty. That's why they're doing what they do. Mercy. Because mercy is oil that cleans dirt. Don't you go get oil, like oil pulling for your teeth? Why do you do oil pulling for your teeth? Because your teeth is dirty. Ah. Huh. You ever thought about that? Some of us want your teeth to be clean. Oil pooling. Do you use olive oil or coconut oil? Now, if we need oil for our teeth, what do we need for our mouth? The natural first. That means the words we say about people, it's, it's a sign we lack a fruit we're not eating. You know, in the natural fruits, when you eat fruits naturally, it cleans your body. It gives your body energy. Fruits are electrons. Fruits are the electricity of the body. So if you don't eat fruits, watch this. Your nervous system will be down. Because fruits is the key to the nervous system. Okay, let's go to now the fruits of the spirit if you don't have them. Imagine if you don't eat the fruits of the spirit. What's happening to your spiritual nervous system? You make people nervous. Your anxiety is projected on them. Your fear is projected. Um, look, spiritual, my friend, it says God's not given the spirit of fear. Where does that come from? But of love, power, sound mind. Now I'm talking about the spiritual body, not the natural body. Let's talk about the natural body. In the natural body, you need, you need potassium, oxygen, sodium, and water to live. Let's go some more. You and I, we are made of nine planets in us. Nine worlds are in us. Don't miss this. Three electrons, three neutrons, three protons. That's nine. So where does this come from? Let's go. Electrons is fruit. Protons is leaves. And neutrons is vitamins. Now, you and I know we need minerals and vitamins and water to stay alive, right? We need fruits, we need leaves, and we need herbs. Because you can get water in fruits. Okay. It's in the natural. You need fruits, you need leaves, you need water to be alive. Now let's go to the fruits of the spirit. Hmm. They have H3O2 in it. Okay. So love has hydrogen. Love has oxygen. That means if you don't have love, you are dead. You don't have hydrogen. So when you breathe on people, it hates. Hydrogen. Oxygen. That means when you inhale, you inhale hate. You see our environment. It's the kind of food we produce. This is how Jesus teaches, my friends. He teaches you natural first. And then he take it to the spirit. You're like, whoa, I need fruits. I need leaves. I need roots. The root, it says what? Speak the truth in love. The love of money is the root of all evil. Even though it hurts, just tell me that you choose to forgive that person. Every time you forgive, you are healed in the wounded area, layer by layer. 
when you think about that person, let go the thought, because you will think about that person, my friends, as you are forgiving the person, watch this, the Holy Spirit, when he's cleaning you of the memories of that wound, will make you think about that person just to forgive again because he's working. When the Holy Spirit is working, he brings up details of the wound. In the end, this is how you know it's Holy Spirit working on you. You're going to have peace, rest, understanding, and more love for that person than what they did to you. This is how you know the Holy Spirit is working in you when you forgive. Now, I want to talk about false forgiveness. Yes, because its friend is fear. You know, you know you can have false repentance, like the children of Israel? Oh, God, we will follow you. Boom, they serve other gods. So that's false repentance. There's also false forgiveness because you don't want to deal with it. True forgiveness. This is how you know the Holy Spirit is working. I'm telling you the truth. You're going to have these four fruits operating while he's working. Peace. That's the pastor's understanding. You might not understand why they did it, but you have peace. Joy. Even when you hear the person's name, it's as if they never did anything. That's how you know you are clean. Now, pure, clean. You know when you clean something, there's no more dirt on it. So the dirt they did to you, you've clean, the Holy Spirit has cleaned it. How do people say they still have memory? Let me tell you why. They haven't finished the process of forgiveness, which is seven times a day. Write it down. Don't miss this revelation. If someone do you wrong, it takes seven times for you to be clean for what they did. Forgiveness is work, my friends. It's not one deal. But if you just, watch this, if somebody do you wrong, and right there and there, seven times that day, tomorrow will be a new day. But do you know why we hold on to grudges and go to sleep on our anger? Woo. Take note. Self. Can I break down some of the S's Holy Spirit said? Jesus said? Self sabotage. Self centeredness. See that? Self. Jesus said if your righteousness don't surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees. So the self righteousness. When you think about the person again, forgive them seventy times seven. This is the work. Forgiveness. Then I will heal the wounds of that affliction. There are also darts from the enemy that can wound. The wounds from the enemy I will heal if you call on me. When you call on my name, I will deliver you. See, everybody, do you see it? Look at the process. Forgiveness, healing, deliverance. You are asking for deliverance, but you have not forgiven. You see what's going on in many deliverance ministries? Come out in Jesus' name. Come where? The demon is laughing at you. you don't. People don't understand the rules of engagement. You know what the rules of engagement are in the courts of heaven? If you have anything in you in common with that demon, they're not going to leave. No, this is my house. That's what they'll tell you. How did you get in there, bitterness? I can't cast the demon out now. They live there. They are the landlord. Everybody, do you understand when it says cast out devils? You don't just go hey, out in Jesus' name. Where are they going? They will laugh at you because they know you've not been in the course of One, the person first needs to be forgiven before the demons will leave because forgiveness breaks the soul tie that the demons are launching on like a tick on a dog. Forgiveness breaks the soul tie before the demons leave. It's like you are breaking the leaf. Forgiveness breaks the leaf. Of the contract. You know when you break your lease? Why are you breaking your lease? See? Forgiveness breaks the lease. 
to be released. Uh huh. And then what happens? An eviction notice is served to the demons. This is how Jesus teaches you forgiveness, healing, deliverance. He said, No, don't pray for their healing. They must forgive. If they forgive, my blood will wipe away the sin. Now the demons will leave. You don't even have to command them out. They leave at the presence of my blood, but there must be confession. Choose to forgive, no matter what people say or do to you. You know why you need to choose to forgive? You're creating a soul, an unwanted soul tie without knowing. Because let me tell you, when it's time for God to bless you, the enemy will bring it up. Mm-hmm. And watch this. And focusing more on the wrong people have done to you leads to depression. Because you're trying to watch this. You're trying to, Jesus told me the number one issue with humanity is trying to fix or trying to control what they can't fix. Mm. He said, you are, respons- you are responsible for you, not others. That's freedom. Humility does not worry about what people think or say. See, humility, it sets you free from rejection of men and opinions of men. How many of us are still bound by the opinions of men? We need to be set free or the rejection of men, or the words of men and women. No, that's people pleasing, not father pleasing. To please the father, you only need validation from him alone, words of affirmation from him alone. My people, if you forgive one another, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So what requirement does it take for the Father to begin to get in fellowship with you? Not to forgive. Forgiveness is the way to the Father. And Jesus said, we must stay in the gym of mercy. Stay in the gym and exercise. Lift up weights of mercy. That's why one of the weighty matters of the Father's heart is mercy. You got to lift up them weights every day. Bench press. 70 times 7. Forgiveness on people. Because Jesus said to me, walking with me, whether you know it or not, someone is not going to like you. Forgive. Because they hate themselves. And when you love them, my love will change them. You cannot change them. But pour my love on them, and I will do the rest. Your job is to just pour love on them, and Holy Spirit will do the rest. Don't try to change anyone. You cannot change them. Only Holy Spirit can change them. But Holy Spirit needs that seed of love in you to be planted in them and let him do the rest. When you try to fix people, you are becoming Savior and God. Mm-hmm. The sooner you forgive someone of an offense, the sooner your healing starts. So, come on, my friends. We cannot delay our healing. It's the sooner wisdom. When someone do you wrong, right there and there, do it quickly. Immediately. Quickly. Don't try to understand. Don't try to understand. Your first response. Uh oh. Some of you have watched the movie uh, uh, 48. The first response to the crime scene. Uh-huh. The first 48. They also know in 48 hours, if you don't get the clues, it's over. Okay, let's come to the natural. Hmm. Your first response, you have 24 hours here. Eh? Demons are waiting. Look, I tell you the truth. Jesus showed me a scene of a woman who her husband cheated on her. Listen to this. He showed me a scene of a woman. She was an evangelist. 
she was evangelizing for Jesus. Getting towards the last days of her life on earth, her husband cheated. Look, I've never seen it in my life, my friends. I I have thousands of demons. Thousands. Not one. Thousands were waiting to enter her. And guess what they were telling her? Kill him. So they were they, they were in her head, pushing her to go and buy a gun. My friend, this is not a story. This is a story. Though. By grace, I witnessed this: how demons operate when someone you are. So she went and bought a gun. An evangelist. Thousands of demons were around her car, going to the gun store. They were the ones as she was driving. She didn't put on worship. Oh. She put on depressive music. So that depressive music made the demons enter the car to give her more thoughts. Want to kill yourself? I'm telling the truth. Demons prepare you before you do evil. Want to kill yourself? They don't. He don't love you. Look what he did to you. See? Look what he did to you. Demons bring up people's wrongs to keep you offended. So they kept telling her, "Kill yourself." And when you look in her eyes, right, my friends, her eyes were white. It was turning dark, meaning her soul was being filled with violence. She went and bought the gun. Her husband came home, unfortunately, with the other woman. She killed him, killed her, and killed herself. He just said, now look, she was in hell for first degree murder. See, we think on earth, that's his first degree murder. No, in hell also is the same. It's court case. It's first degree murder. You don't take someone's life that God gave them. She was down there for first degree murder. She was in the seventh degree, the seventh level of hell. You know, there's nine levels of hell, right? She was in the seventh. In the place called unforgiveness, anger. She was in prison. Her white garment that she was wearing became filthy. And the same demons that were on earth were now her lords down there, beating her every day. They said, this is what unforgiveness did. It leads to death. But remember what? Remember before she killed herself, they were telling her in the car to do it. You don't, people don't just do it, just do it. No, voices are in their head. Arrows are being shot. I know it's not just arrows. The demons are actually around them, convincing them and luring them into, watch this, once the demons have your will, you will do, you will do their will. They, they come after your will. When they have your will, you will do their will. And by the time you are done, it might be too late. Many are in prison today, full of regret when they listen to demons. All because of anger. The partling guy. You know what he said after he shot the children? Oh, demons were in my head telling me to go and kill these children today. The judge will not understand that. Hmm. Anger. If you allow unforgiveness to go, take note, the roots become bitter. When bitterness grow in you, you cannot enjoy me. Look what ever look what bitterness does to three areas of our walk with the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. One, you cannot enjoy me. So why are people not enjoying the presence of God? The root is bitterness. Secret root called bitterness. I don't feel his presence. I'm not hearing him. What's going on with me? Tonight you have answers. Bitterness. What am I bitter about? Someone has done you wrong that you didn't deal with when they did the wrong to you and it's been growing. And now it's catching up to you. While men slept, the enemy sowed a seed. If you go to sleep on anger, he will come and sow a seed. And you will have dreams. Let me tell you how, let me tell you how the enemy works sometimes. You will have a dream of it. He will sow the seed. 
and God will show you the dream. The enemy has come to sow a seed. The devil don't give dreams. But God will show you a dream. Hey, you been you went to sleep on your anger. This is the seed he has sown. Get up and pray. That's when you get up from such dreams, immediately you're like, pray. If you don't pray in the morning, it will manifest. You will have on you will have an unusual urge of bitterness towards somebody. You don't know why. It will sow that list. Or urge. Why am I that off again? Why, what's wrong with me? I know how it began. While you slept on that anger, he came and sowed a seed of jealousy and envy. You see it? You get up. She's not who I am. Yeah, there's a seed in you. And if you don't uproot it, in nine months you're going to give birth to it. The enemy just made, excuse my language, while you slept, excuse my language, he came and slept with you. He came and be intimate with you. He came and sowed a seed in you to give birth to his child called jealousy. To give birth to his child called envy. Do you know those are also children of the devil? They are not just character traits, though. They are children of the devil because he sowed a seed. That's why I weep for many women. Because you are carriers, you are receivers, and you are birthers. When the enemy is looking for someone to work, he's not going to look for a man. That's why he went to the woman in the beginning. Because he knew her nature of receiving. Ah, oh, she can receive this seed. She can give birth to it. And she did. Cain. Cain was evil. Where did he come from? The seed in Eve. And but you see how it works? He saw a seed in you, you're going to give birth to it. And what you give birth to will kill the good. Bitterness will make you kill everything good in your life and people's life. Just like Cain and Abel. Watch this. You cannot enjoy me, hear me, or discern me. So three things bitterness comes from. Everyone on the prayer line. The presence of God. The voice of God in your eyes. That means bitterness go for your eyes, your ears, and your intimacy. Bitterness also causes much of the sickness that's on earth today. Wow. So I'm sorry to say some of the sickness and diseases you see, it's not because of just mineral deficiency or Dehydration. No. That headache might be because of bitterness. That fatigue and that stress are because of bitterness. What's the solution? Forgive quickly. Don't go to sleep on your anger. I tell you the truth. When someone do you wrong, immediately start forgiving your heart. Immediately, don't even try to understand why. Why are you trying to understand? You're not going to find peace understanding. The choice you make brings the peace. Choose life or death. And death is subtle. Hmm. Death is subtle. Yes, Lord. If we don't want the enemy to steal our rewards, mm, yes, Lord. See, Father want to give us rewards, promises, blessings, inheritances, and covenants. Do you know what can steal these? This was revealed. Bitterness. One more. My children are unforgiving in their hearts, storing up grievances against each other. Mm. Storing up. Watch this. I cannot forgive those who you don't forgive. 
Is this clear? Hmm. He said, I cannot forgive those. What is all? I cannot forgive those who don't forgive. There's one thing Jesus will not forgive, my friends. Actually, two. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and unforgiveness. He said to me, that's the whole purpose I went to the cross. Forgiveness. The whole purpose of the cross, he said, reconciliation to the Father is connected to forgiveness and punishment. Why would you punish somebody else? I forgave you. This letter is from 2011. I was going through heavy correction. When Jesus is teaching you meekness, watch this. He confronts those 40 pride. Because pride, pride don't want you to forgive. Because pride wants you to be right. And I tell you the truth, this is the hard part. And I say the same thing to you, Jesus said. Look on the cross. He said, I took the wrong to make you right before the Father. The Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. He said, to make peace and forgive. At times, you must take the wrong people do to you. See? Give up your right to be right. Like I did on the cross. See? Everyone on the prayer line? Jesus didn't choose righteousness on the, prayer, on, 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 on the cross. He chose love. He gave up his right to be right. He laid down his rights. <laughs> to be right and took the wrong that's what lambs do lambs they take away they take the beating they take the wounds they take the scars they take the bruises and they turn it into forgiveness they were wounded for my transgression you see that bruised for my iniquities you see that just died for my peace you see that he says took our wounds Give us peace. Same thing you must do for your neighbor. If he says, love one another as I have loved you. So how has he loved you? And you are to love others the same way. You can't punish somebody when Jesus pardoned you. Uh-oh. Are you punishing somebody in your heart? Mm-hmm. Remember the parable of the two? He couldn't pay. He couldn't pay, and he was forgiven. But when he went and he told his neighbor, "You owe me," the king called him and said, "I forgive you of your debt, but you can't forgive any of your debt." And was thrown back in prison. Forgiveness puts you in prison. Sorry, unforgiveness puts you in prison. Forgive us of our debt. In those times when you are in debt, you are put in prison. The king pardoned him and forgave him. But then he went to his neighbor and said, "Where is my debt?" Ungrateful, he called him ungrateful seven, and put him back, put him back in prison. To let you know, unforgiveness is a prison. You gotta come out of prison, and the only way to come out of prison is to do the opposite. Un for, 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 give. There is giving in your four. That means forgiveness is giving, not receiving. Hmm. Hmm. Because of that, forgive, giving, not receiving. So if you receive hate, give back, not receive. Forgive, forbear, forbear, forgive. I cannot forgive those. Who don't forgive. Is this clear? How can I forgive you if you yourself cannot forgive those around you? How? Sorry. Does not my words speak of this? Forgiveness is love. Unforgiveness leads to all kinds of sin. See? Unforgiveness leads to all kinds of work. Oh, I like how Jesus teaches. All kinds of he didn't say all kinds of iniquity. 
or transgression. So what's the beginning of sin? Unforgiveness. So people say, oh, that's not a sin. They don't know what sin is. Sin is un. Everybody, do you see it? Unforgiveness. That's not my worst speak of this. Unforgiveness due to all kind of sin, bitterness, revenge, wrongful judgment, and on and on. It gives a foothold to the enemy to come in and destroy. So now let's break it down again. If unforgiveness leads to sin and it gives the enemy, see, a foothold to come in and what? Not steal, not kill, destroy. So unforgiveness destroys. Then what steals? Remember, he comes to steal, kill, destroy. Let's break it down. Anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. Anger steals. Bitterness kills. Unforgiveness destroys. This is how people destroy relationships to others. It keeps you from closeness, intimacy with me. So he said. So what is keeping you from intimacy with Jesus and the Father? Unforgiveness. Your God and keeps you from receiving my spirit. Wow. So if you have unforgiveness, that the Holy Spirit leaves. Everybody, did you hear that? It keeps you from receiving my spirit. This is serious, he said. So why don't some people have the Holy Spirit? Unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit cannot be where there's unforgiveness. That's what the Bible says. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Then it mentions it. Malice. Read it in, I think it's in uh, Romans. Do not grieve. No, you can lie to the Holy Spirit. Grieve the Holy Spirit. Resist the Holy Spirit. Let's, let me show you how you grieve the Holy Spirit. Malice. Malice is a fruit of anger. So you can grieve the Holy Spirit. How many of you want to keep the Holy Spirit? Love. Forgiveness. Every time you forgive, right, I tell you the truth. Holy Spirit increases his presence. Increases his power, increases his love. He makes you innocent like a dove when you forgive. I tell you the truth. Holy Spirit will give you dove eyes when you forgive. You're innocent when you forgive. You're guilty if you don't forgive. You're no more a dove. You're a raven. Mm. Didn't the raven go to the second thief? And uh oh, okay. Did, did, somebody, did somebody catch that? The raven went to the second thief and plunged out his eye. You know why? Because the second thief was guilty. Guilt is a raven. Wanna be innocent? Does. Can I watch this? If you are unforgiving. You cannot be ready for my soon return. This will hold you back. It separates us. Do you know how the enemy separates you from Jesus and others? How many of you always want to be by yourself? Tonight you're hearing roots and answers. The root is unforgiveness. It separates you not only from Jesus. You start to separate yourself from people. That's deadly. That's dangerous. Just said, this is serious. Because how can you be led back if you don't have... It is, it is serious. Think about it. Everybody think about it. Unforgiveness separates you from Jesus and separates you from people and you, you're not receiving the Holy Spirit. How are you going to be led back to Jesus without the Holy Spirit? This is serious. Unforgiveness, the Holy Spirit leaves. 
Holy Spirit can tolerate a lot of things. He's doing it now. He's tolerating so many darkness upon the earth. But there's one who don't stay. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, he's gone. Benny Heen talks about it. How the Holy Spirit left him for three years because he had unforgiveness towards his wife. Because he wanted his divorce. Three years, the Holy Spirit was gone. He had the anointing, but the Holy Spirit was gone. Let me teach you how to dress and keep the person, the third person of the Holy Spirit in your life. Forgiveness. Oh, he stays around somebody who emulates Christ. Who imitates Christ. The Holy Spirit loves to be around those who imitate Christ. And he leads and guides you in imitation. Each time I show mercy, let me t- each time I show mercy because Jesus says shows mercy. Let me tell you how the Holy Spirit increases. You start. He grants you, watch this, tears of repentance for them. You start crying for them. You start saying, Father, forgive them. You cannot pray that prayer without the Holy Spirit leading you to pray. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The Holy Spirit begins to glorify or show you Jesus doing it. You need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you out of unforgiveness. Leave this unforgiveness behind. Forgive each other. Lay down your anger towards each other. What do you gain? Oh, I love this. What do you gain? What do you gain when you have all anger towards one another? What do you gain, my friends on the prayer line? What did you gain? Habori anger. Nothing. You suffer more than the person you are angry with. Can you not see this? So he said, Is your eternal salvation worth Habori anger towards another? This is eternal, though, my friend. Unforgiveness is on an eternal level, not earthly. So on earth, you don't want to forgive that person? There is eternal consequences. Anger. See, if you're not thinking about your eternal life, you all graduate. Yeah, the whole body of Christ needs to hear this. Because there's a lot of people who have unforgiveness using social media platforms to expose who is false. Those people have unforgiveness. They, are set. they don't have the Holy Spirit. Because if they have the Holy Spirit, they would expose. They will see the skeletons in their closet before they try to expose anyone. <laughs> Who gave you the assignment to expose falsehood when you yourself there's falsehood in you? What is falsehood? Lack of love. Lack of love makes you false. Well, Jesus said you should know them by their fruit. The first fruit is love. Love makes you true. Hate makes you false. And in the end times, they will call good evil and evil good. Uh, take note of that. Everyone, prayer like this is a question, though. Is your eternal salvation worth Habori anger towards each other. Your salvation is on the line. Do you see there's so many factors? That's why every day you need love. Someone is gonna try you. Knowingly or unknowingly. And if you want to watch it, you know the most deadly one? The most deadly unforgiveness. It's when you're not around people. You say, how? When you are alone. The Bible says, a man who is idle is easy prey for the devil. When you are alone, you are easy prey than when you're around people. You know why? He will bring up all your past wrongs. Have you had those thoughts? Think about your past and all the wrongs you've made. That wasn't you. It was the enemy bringing up your past. Wrongs. Now you have unforgiveness. So your 
yourself. That's harder than having a forgiveness towards someone. That's easy. Forgiving yourself is harder because you did it to yourself. You see the difference between when somebody do you wrong and when you do yourself wrong. And if you don't take care of your alone, then you're going to bring on the wrong to do to others. So be around Jesus. You don't be the black sheep that's always in the, in the wilderness. That's why Jesus will leave 99 and go for one. That one is in trouble. That one is in serious need of help. Unforgiveness make you leave the hundred. Everybody get that parable? The 99, Jesus will leave 99 and go for one. That one has wandered away because of unforgiveness. I don't want to keep following Jesus a second. Unforgiveness will stop you from following Jesus. My friends, it's, it's dangerous. You must search your heart and ask this question tonight. What is worth losing your eternal soul over? Wow. I can lose my eternal soul over a petty dispute? That's what he just said. Over a petty dispute? Hmm. Wait a minute now. I can lose my salvation over pettiness. Is that worth it, my friends on the prayer line? Just forgive. Forgiveness is the narrow way to heaven. Unforgiveness is the wide way, broad way. Forgive and walk away. And feel a dark cloud lift. What should I tell you? A dark cloud comes around you. And it clouds your mind. It makes you delusional. You know what delusion is? You believe a lie more than the truth. That's a dark cloud. That means unforgiveness creates a dark cloud. Not the presence of God. The presence of who? A dark cloud. Even if the other person won't forgive you, pray for them. So it's not about what the other person, you go to them, oh, I did my part, and then I responded. You've done your part. The next thing you need to do is Pray for them. And I say it again. If you tried to reconcile with someone and they're not willing, of course, they won't be willing because the Bible says an offended brother is hard to win. When somebody is offended, it's hard to win them, the Bible says, than an iron brass in Proverbs. And one, one who is offended, it's hard to win than iron brass. Can you imagine offense makes your heart iron? You can't be warned. It clogs your eyes and your ears from hearing truth that will set you free from your present delusion. Because delusion is making you believe the lies. But no, this is too serious. This is just going down the down. No, 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 my friends. Choose forgiveness. Choose love and be free. Do your part. Next one, he says, pray for them. Yes, pray for your enemies. Pray. With, for them with a sincere heart and I will warm your heart towards those who harm you. I will give you a heart of flesh. How can you expect those who do not walk in my way or those who don't possess my Holy Spirit to treat you as they do? You cannot expect people who don't know Jesus or possess the Holy Spirit. Now, you may say, wait a minute, but they're in the church. Just because you're in the church, that don't mean you know Jesus. I don't mean you have the Holy Spirit. So, everybody right there, that's an inspection of fruits right there. Jesus says, you cannot expect those who walk in my way. My way. Remember, he says, I'm the way. What's the way? Love. They say they know Jesus, but they don't know the way. No, they don't know the way. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You must render patience. See what Paul said? Have you received the, the Holy Spirit upon salvation? They said no. In the Bible, Paul said people received salvation. They accepted Jesus, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So what did he do? He laid hand on them. And they received the Holy Spirit. See? You can receive Jesus, but not have the Holy Spirit. You must render patience, kindness, and long-suffering to those who don't know me. 
Oh, but I know Jesus. I know you don't. Words like this reveal. People who say they know Jesus, watch how they treat you. Do they have patience? Do they have long suffering? Do they have kindness? Those three, Jesus just I, I'm going to repeat this at least seven times on the line so you can look at the fruits of the matter when people say they know Jesus but they treat you different from how he is. Oh, I love Jesus. You can forgive. Hmm. It's kind. Fruits, not feelings. Fruits, not emotions. Fruits, not facts. Facts are not fruits. Mm, that's a Facebook post. Let me write that down. Thank you. <laughs> I can't do that. Facts are not fruits. It's because you have information. That don't mean it's fruitful. You shall know them by the eye. You just mentioned the fruits right now. You must render patience, kindness, and long-suffering to those who don't know me. It is impossible for those who don't know me, truly know me, to behave as if they do. Can you not see this? You cannot expect this from those who walk apart from me. So what fruit do we need tonight, every day? Oh, man of God, what about those from the church? They go to church, they pray, they fast. They don't mean they know Jesus. Don't be blinded by their spirituality and religiosity. Fruits is love, not religion. You can go to church, you can fast, you can pray. That's what Paul said in Revelation. I mean, saw in First Corinthians 13. If I have the tongues of angels and the tongues of men, Yet I do not have love. Uh huh. See, it comes down to love, my friends. Not tongues of angels. Oh, if I have full faith, see that move mountains. That, please, everyone, friend, like when you mature, don't be fooled by that. Oh, that man of God's used powerful man. God using him in miracles. That don't blind me. Why should it blind you? If you really walk with Jesus and look at the heart, not the miracle. Are they walking in love, humility, and meekness? That's the fruit of a true man of God. Don't be blinded by, oh, he can prophesy. He can prophesy and not have love. Also, the Bible says, pursue love. Then earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit is second. Love is first. So check their love walk. Hmm. I love this one. Y'all ready for this one? This is very, very good. Too many people have disregard for each other. Little patience, little honor. This is all leading to strife. See, when people are disrespectful, it's going to lead to strife. Disrespectful. See that? This. This. Little patience. I mean, from your patience, it's little you will be disrespectful. And you see how the Holy Spirit breaks down things? Without patience, you will disrespect people. So people now everyone says, you know why people are disrespectful? They don't have patience. They'll be offended. Two, it's all leading to strife. It leads to discontent, hurt feelings. Why are your feelings hurt? Mm, my God. Don't miss this. You know why your feelings get hurt? You are discontent. Two, strife. Three, see how, oh, I love, I love the word of God. Come on, you got to love the word of God, how it breaks it down. See that? Let's get to the end. He says, this is all leading to strife. It leads to discontent and hurt feelings. My children are selfish. No, let's break it down. Selfish. What are the seeds of selfish? And go back. Little patience. Disrespect. Strife. Discontent. Hurt feelings. Selfish. Watch this. They want to be first in all things. That's why in marriage, 
the man should put God first, not his wife. Mm -hmm. The woman should put God first, not her husband. Mm -hmm. If you want to be first in all things, you are selfish. Wow. See? The first shall be last. The last shall be... So a man should put his wife last. Don't listen to this worldly teaching, though. And women saying, oh, I need a man who will put me first. Run. Run from such women. Put the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit first if you are a man. Keep. Put your wife last. See? That's the way. Father is first. Wife is last. If Adam did that, he wouldn't have chose his wife first. Come on, somebody. You have chose God first. He didn't put his wife last. That's why he ate the fruit. But America would tell you, oh, put your wife first. Uh, your wife would tell, hey, put your children first. You know, in case everything's out of order. A woman has children. She put her children first before the man. The man puts this. Where there is no order, the Bible says there is confusion and evil. Read it. It's in James. Where there is selfish ambition, there is all manner of evil, he said. But you see the seeds, selfish, they want to be first in all things. They are very insensitive to the needs of others. This can go to our relationships with Jesus and the Father and with people. We need to be sensitive to the needs of others, not yours. You want a healthy, healthy relationship that pleases the Father? The man must put God's needs first before his wife. Uh-oh. Are men doing that? Putting the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit's needs first? Putting the woman last? Women, are you putting God's needs first? And putting your children last? You realize I didn't say your husband. What is the order? Christ is the head of the man. Huh? The head of the head of Christ is God. The head of the man is Christ. The head of a woman is the man. That's the order. What is order? When the woman starts putting the children first above the husband. See? Or above God. This order that will make you rude and arrogant because you don't have patience and kindness for your first law. You have left your first law, which is the Father and Jesus. But let's come to the natural. You have left your you have left your first law, your husband. Husband, you have left your first law, your wife. This is they're talking natural now. The children are last. Let's talk natural and spiritual. Spiritual father is first. If you are man, if you are man, the father is first. The wife is last. You see, you are not in that equation because you have died to self. It's about the needs of the father and the needs of the woman. Let's see to the needs of others. So, I reason people who are selfish, and a lot of people are selfish in this generation. He said, how do you know they are selfish? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Just be meek and quiet and let them talk for one hour and don't respond. Whew, my God, man, let me tell you, man. You will see the roots of selfishness flowing like River Jordan. This is what I am looking for in the man. When you ask them one question, what are you, how are you going to meet the needs of that man? They can't answer it. I say, you are selfish. They don't call me back. You are selfish, and God will not give you one of His sons. So stop praying for a, stop praying for a husband, and go to the process of singleness. Amen. To become selfless. <laughs> so I say, amen. Go to the process of singleness to become selfless, and God will give you a king. Same thing goes for the man. I'm talking natural first, because things are first natural, then spiritual. Let's talk natural. The woman, 
is first. If you are a man, husband, love your wife. As Christ loved the church. The woman is first. That means you got to give up your need to tend to her need. She got to give up her need to tend to your need. Oh, that's a beautiful, harmonious home. But each other is sensitive to each other's needs, not want, because want is selfish. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Women, if you call that man your shepherd, you can't have want. Because he says, God will supply my needs. Not once. So if I ask you right now, what do you need in a man? It's going to be hard for you. Because you are used to want. And want is selfish. Need is selfish. Because it makes you content. Not wanting more. Which the root is greed. Selfishness always go with greedy. And there's a woman I saw on TikTok. How sad. So sad. She left her husband. And the man had the man was perfect for her, but she left him because she wanted more money. She left the man because she wanted more money, and she came on TikTok to see how she regrets she left her husband. Her husband, my friend, get off line. Look how he, the man is now dying, rejection and abandonment. You see, selfish motives when it gets into a relationship. But what happens? You end up destroying the other person without knowing selfishness. You begin to look at yourself. Oh, I'm not content. I deserve more. No, you don't. We need to stop talking like that. You don't deserve more. Walking with Jesus and the Father is about grace and mercy. You don't deserve nothing. It's all by His grace and His mercy that you are receiving. When you begin to think you deserve more and your worth and value don't match what you deserve, you are delusional. You know why Esther deserved a king? She went through 12 months for that man. Mm. Ruth deserved Boaz. You know why? She worked for that man. Uh oh. See, the ancient path is missing in this generation. You know why? Because the spirit of this age has taken over. But we must set the order back in the kingdom. That's why there are many relate. I'm telling you, there are many marriages right now that have secret bitterness. You know what they are saying? Loneliness. Um, it's because of the children. That's why they're How are you going to stay in a marriage because of the children and both of you don't love each other? You don't know that love you don't have for each other will pass on to the children? Oh, can I read to you what Jesus told me? What happens to a broken home? The permanent scars of rejection upon the children and how it affects the firstborn the most? But the parents don't see it? Mm-hmm. Selfish choices have affected many children. Is it not again? Selfish choices. We don't know the true meaning of marriage and even in relationships, friendships. What is a friendship? If both of you are not selfless, it's not going to rock, work. You are using each other. Same thing in friendships. Put down your needs, tend to the needs of your friend. When it's your time, they will know to tend to your needs. When it's their time, you will know to... Oh, wow, that's so beautiful. It's selfless. It's serving. S-S-S. Selfless. Serving. Sacrificing. Not this generation. Becoming more selfish. And it is written. We are living in the perilous times where people will be lovers of self more than lovers of God. It's, it's, it's showing. Read, is it Titus or James, one of those that talks about living in perilous times, lovers of self, more than lovers of God. We've seen it. People love themselves. And they take that 
attitude into relationships and marriage. And don't let the real person who has the truth from the Father and Jesus say, they see you as an enemy to their selfish agenda. I need a man who's a millionaire. Where did we get these delusions from? Who told you you are naked? This is some of the things the Father would say when he come on earth. Who told you that? This is not my original intent for men and women. The intent is to love and give me holy offspring. You know what love is? Lay down your life. That also means lay down your needs for the other person. Ask any successful marriage. That's what they'll tell you. My mom and dad, 62 years. That's what they taught me that too. 62 years together. They married young, you know. They're in their 80s now. 62 years. You know what my stepmom always tell me? I laid down my life for your dad. But we crying on the phone. I see the Bible right for my face. I supply his needs. He supply my needs. I be hearing Jesus talking to her. Supplying his needs. Look at LeBron James' wife. Have you, ever, have you seen LeBron James' wife? That's a virtuous woman. 20 years of supporting her husband. Not in the spotlight. Uh-huh. See where he is right now? It's because of her, her humility. Her meekness is where he is today because of her humility and meekness. Humility and meekness is beautiful. Imagine the man having humility, the woman having meekness. The devil can't come there. No, please, we need to stop giving this excuse. Oh, no one is perfect. That's a lie. Be ye perfect as your Father, that's a command from Jesus in Matthew. We need to stop using the excuse of no one is perfect and press on to perfection. And what's perfection? Love. Perfect love. So the fruit of the Spirit makes you perfect. Please don't forget those words Jesus told me. He said, I don't accept illegitimate excuses. Be perfect. It's a command. As your father is perfect. I said, Lord, what is perfection? The fruit of the Spirit. Patience is perfect in my eyes. When you are patient with me and patient with others, in my eyes, you are perfect. So who said no one can be perfect? The Bible says God moves towards those whose heart is perfect towards me. Your heart can be perfect towards me. What is perfection? Mercy. Forgiveness. Loyalty, faithfulness, see those fruits and integrities of heart are perfection. Abraham walked perfect before me. Trust is perfection. So please stop using the excuse, oh, no one is perfect. No. We are to pursue Jesus to have a perfect heart towards each other because perfect love casts out all fear. You know why there's fear in marriages? Someone's love is not perfected. Imagine the man having perfect love. Cast out all them fear from the women. Women, that's the kind of man you need. A man that can cast out your fears with the perfect love of the Father. Now let me tell you, marriage is beautiful when you do it Jesus' way. The peace. Look, wars and battles will arise, but the peace will reign. The joy will reign. The love will reign. The humility will reign. You, as a matter of fact, you will have more fruits you will bear when you walk in the way of the garden. Tree of life in your marriage. Imagine the woman knowing your needs. He knows your needs. Both of you know the father's needs. Ah, what a blessing. Bless home. And where there is selfishness, it's the beginning of disaster and destruction. 
you leave your husband because you want more money. Now you are single. <laughs> Selfish choices have destroyed and brought about broken homes. Because Adam and Eve were selfish. Look at us today. Jesus didn't come and be selfless. Oh, my friends. Selfless is more beautiful than selfish. And when you see, watch this. He said, they want to be first in, first in all things. They are very insensitive to the needs of others. They fall short in caring for others. This leads to anger and argument. I'm sorry, can I be bold? I don't want to hear people say, oh, in every marriage there's going to be arguments. In every argument, in every, in, in every marriage there's going to be disagreements. No. That's a lie. If we both want to walk in love, there will not be no argument. Imagine two selfless people tending to the needs of one another. If she needs a vacation, he already knows it. He has studied her love language and is supplying those needs. And you're doing the same consistently, persistently, diligently. Oh, what a glorious marriage. The way of the Father. There's honor. There's reverence. Who said that's impossible? With God, all things are. See, with God. God is not in the midst. That's why it's possible to divorce. But with God, with the Father in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it is possible to see the original pattern of marriage. I'm not just talking marriage, also your friends. Do you know the needs of your friend? That person you call friend, do you know their needs? We call people friends that are not friends. Though. Let's be real, though. Real friendship. According to Jesus' way, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I tell you. Do you have friends on the line who they know your needs? You know their needs and you supply their needs and, you, and they supply your needs? The Satan cannot touch that, 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 that principle because you are selfless. He can only come with their selfishness. You are selfless. He is selfless. Where are he going to go? What's he going to do? Nothing. Because both of you have overcome the number one common symptom of destruction. Self. If you're on the line and you desire the Father Jesus to bring you to a holy marriage or a holy friendship, learn the ways of humility. Learn the ways of love. Learn the ways of sacrifice. Because there are some things you will have to sacrifice to make the marriage and the friendship fit and worthy. But discontentment and disagreement because there's selfishness. Do I hear this? I am saddened by this, but the crux of this problem stems from self-centeredness. It comes from a lack of humility. As Jesus words. One more. You want to hear this one? Well, maybe tomorrow on Zoom. Yeah, let's leave this one. Let's leave the last letter for tomorrow on Zoom. And then the fourth letter. That's the fourth letter. Um, what matters to me is what matters to me is that you love me so much that you are willing to forgive and pray for them. You know what matters to Jesus the most? Let's talk about what matters to Jesus the most the most tomorrow on Zoom. Mm-hmm. What matters to him the most? Once you know what matters to your king and your bridegroom and your friend, you do it. So tomorrow by grace, the last letter we'll discuss. This alone is deliverance and healing. You don't need prayer. Truth will set you free, not prayer. Truth like this sets you free from the religious mindset. Changes your heart. 
to want to be like him. Mm. You want to be like Jesus? And you want that love you have for him to flow to others? One thing is necessary. Sacrifice and selfless. This he will bless you tremendous for because you are caring for the needs of others. You care for your needs. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. But before we end tonight, does anybody have any questions tonight before we before we end tonight? Amen. Oh. Four o'clock. God bless each and every one of you. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts. If there's anything in our hearts that's not like Him. Holy Spirit, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. You see that? Create in me a clean heart. That should be our prayer. Renew the right spirit. Watch this. Your heart can be clean, but your spirit is not right. See? Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit. You can have the wrong spirit. You can have the wrong spirit and have a clean heart. Ooh, that's dangerous. You want to have the, And David says it clear. Create in me a clean heart, heart, and renew the right spirit within me. So the heart is different from the spirit. We need both. So tomorrow, by grace, we'll be on Zoom, please, to continue this depth of healing and deliverance when it comes to the matters of the heart so that we don't walk around with secret thoughts. That's what David said. Cleanse me from secret faults. What are the secret faults in our hearts we're not cleaned, cleansed from? It must be addressed so that we can be pleasing. For he says, a broken and contrite spirit if I desire Mm. So, God bless every one of you for coming tonight. And by grace, tomorrow we'll be on Zoom to continue the teaching on forgiveness. It's the key to healing and deliverance. That now makes you a recipient for God's blessing. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Can you please turn off the light? Thank you. The, the, the sun. Love you all. Good night. Bye-bye. Shalom.